thank God for each one of you. It's a wonderful night. God has a very, very special word for you. And for me as well, we celebrate our God together with the people that are with us through the live media. I never forget that. Because they are very, very precious to us. Very, very precious. In the eyes of God. And that's why God, in his own way, made it possible for us to be live streaming. I want you to understand that there are people, this is the only place they feed from through the live media. I had a lady here the other day, and she came and told me from Ebley, we were there, told me, I have been following you for two years. I'm a Catholic. I usually don't go to any, you know, to the church. And I have been following you. I've been feeding. And today I decided to come and see the place for two solid years. That's why I never forget the people that are with us right now through the live media. And I'm going to beseech you even before we go, even as we go to open the Bible, there are so many other people that you can help feed. One, you subscribe to our platforms. Two, you share the message. Share the message. It is a way of evangelism. That lady left me sort of amazed by what God can do through what looks like very simple things. Two years. For two years she has been following us, feeding from this altar. She is there in every service. That's what she told me. And I want you to I want you to consider that the message that you were here today, the message you were here on Sunday, the message you had yesterday, share it. The TV station is right at the corner. We got some very good feedback from the, uh, you know, Communication Authority of Kenya. Very good. So we are good to go. We are, we are doing the logistics. We are doing all the kind of preparations we need. If by any chance you have not picked the form to be a partner with us, please pick that form from the media team there. But above all, share this message. Share, share it, share it, share it. Somebody needs it. Go with me to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I want to encourage somebody here tonight because right now you seem to be like in the valley of decision. Right now, you seem to be confused. You don't know whether to go to the right or whether to go to the left. And I want to encourage you. And by showing you that it is very vital for you and for me to stick to the word you heard from the mouth of God first. Stick to the word you heard first. I'll say that again. Stick to the word you heard first. 
Math, in the book of Mark, chapter 5, I'll begin from verse 21. There is so much wealth in these scriptures. We can't exhaust them. When Jesus again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there, seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying, please come and put your hands on her so that she healed and lived. So Jesus went with him. Listen to this. When we read these scriptures, there are certain things that I want you to note there. Jesus had crossed from the other side of Gennesareth, where he had cast out the legion out of a man, about 6,000 demons. And when he crossed on this other side, the Bible comes and tells me, Big crowds gathered around him. And when those people came and gathered around Jesus, the Bible says he was right on the edge of the lake. Jesus was thronged. He's right at the edge, you know, of the lake. But here, Jairus, Jairus came and fell at his feet. How come that G Jairus penetrated through the crowd? Of course, he was Jairus. Jairus was like the presiding, the presiding pastor of the synagogue. He was a very senior man. And so, when this senior man comes, I mean, people will give way. People will just give way. It's Jairus. He is well known. And the Bible comes and says, He came and fell at the feet of Jesus and said, My little daughter is dying. And she was. Actually, she was. Please come and put your hands so that she will be healed and live. There's something I, 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 I see here. Desperate situations demand desperate response. This man was desperate. And although he was, you know, a Pharisee or so to speak, I mean, he threw away all his religious inclinings. And because he was in desperate need, he comes and passes through the crowd, falls at the feet of Jesus, and the Bible says, Jesus said, let's go. He will press through the crowd. He will leave everybody else. He will just leave everybody else. If you are desperate enough and you are seeking him with all your heart, he has no problem in leaving everybody else. If you can press through the crowd, Jesus will press through the crowd. Let me say that again. If you can press through the obstacles, Jesus will remove the obstacles. I'll say that again. I'll say that again. So that you, 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 you come and ask yourself, how desperate do I want my girl healed? If you can press through the crowd, Jesus will penetrate through the crowd. If you can press through the obstacles, Jesus will remove the obstacles. How desperate are you? We are living at a time when it is very, very easy to be casual. Desperate people are never casual. Desperate people will climb 
any mountain. They were placed through any crowd. By that I mean they would do whatever it takes to reach Jesus. They would do whatever it takes to reach Jesus. This is so vital for you. So, so important. And that's what we are going to see here. We are going to see it not just with the Jairus, not just with the Jesus as he responds to Jairus, but we are also going to see it with a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. The Bible says, A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up be behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. If you want to understand fully what this woman did, the kind of obstacle she had to pass through, I want you to read in your own time Leviticus chapter 15. A woman going through the issue she was going through, she was not even supposed to come near people. She was not. But now, she is desperate. Twelve years, she has used every coin she ever saved. And what I want you to see here is, there are two major things I love about this woman. Jesus had said he is going to Jairus' house. Jairus is on another's level. He is on another level. Listen to this. Jairus is on another level. But even if Jairus is the one being given priority, please listen to me. And because this is so vital. She said, it is me who is desperate for healing. I want to rise above an inferiority complex. I refuse to be treated as worthless. I refuse to say that everybody else can get it other than me. Here is an opportunity. I'm not going to let it go. Don't waste opportunity because of comparing yourself with others. In the eyes of God, we are all equal. Don't waste opportunity. Because you think you are way down the ladder. As far as going to the presence of God is concerned, we are all equal. That's why I love this woman. Oh, I love her. I love her. Oh, yes, it's Jairus, Tan. But it can be my turn as well. I don't know when I, I'll have another opportunity to pray. I don't know when I'll have another opportunity to be with Jesus. I don't know. So now that I have the opportunity, I know if I only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. I'll do it. And the Bible comes and says here, 
the next thing that you have to understand is she had also to press from behind. She had to press through the crowd. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how we will understand, me included, that since the days of, jo of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is always suffering opposition. And the ones that are determined, they will get it. By force. By force. I, and I want, I want to, I want, you know, I want to bring to your attention something very vital. Very, very important. There is nothing like self-pity in the kingdom of God. It doesn't sell anywhere. Rise up as a child of God. There is so much God has for you. But, you, but like Jairus, you got to rise up. You got to say, I don't care what my fellow uh, priests or ruler of the synagogue or the Pharisees will say, I don't have time to waste on the crowd. I know I want Jesus. I'm going to Jesus. You got to rise up like this woman and say it's me who has been suffering for 12 years. Whatever man will say, that's not my issue. And I'm not going to feel that uh, the others should get the miracles fast. Uh, it's all for others. But me, you can see what is happening with my body. In the eyes of God, we are all equal. That's why I love Jesus. Jesus just, the Bible, the Bible says, at once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. I love this woman. The reason why this kind of woman would it not be you know, allowed to come to other people is because she would defile them. Jesus looks around and says, who has touched me? Of course, the woman is trembling because in the, eye, in the eyes of people, is, I mean, she has defiled Jesus, but, which is impossible. But she comes and tells Jesus, trembling, I did it, and I got healed. I'm the one who did it, and I got healed. I, 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 I love that kind of honesty. Now, the Bible comes and says, and this is, I said all that as a, as a matter of introduction. Let me now come to what I wanted to talk to you tonight. Look at verse 35. Everything I said there was bonus. Everything I said before. Now is when we will come to the meat of the message. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? Please underline verse 36. Ignoring what they said, 
Jesus told the synagogue ruler, do not be afraid, keep believing. In other words, stick to the first word I gave you. I'll say that again. Stick to the first word that I gave you. I told you I'm going to heal your girl. I am in the process of going to heal your girl. There has been delay because of interruption. People have come and given you a contrary word. Jairus, stick to the word that I gave you at first. I can go home. I've finished the message. Stick. Jesus tells Jairus, I told you I am going to heal your girl. I am in the process of going to heal your girl. There has been delay. There has been interruption. Follow this. There has been delay. There has been interruptions. And not only that, some men have come and given you a contrary report. Stick to the word that I gave you first. That's why, why he told him, don't be afraid. Keep on believing. Let me repeat that. My lecturer told me repetition is the law of learning. Listen to this. Jesus looks at this man. He ignored what they said. Jesus is not going to respond to anything other than what he spoke. I'll say that again. Jesus is not going to respond to anything other than the word he gave you. That's why he ignored them. And we'll see this in the Bible. Sometimes in your life, somebody comes and tells you, my brother, I love you so much. I've known you for many years. We have worked together. There is a very nice deal that I, ha that, that I have been told about. And it, all we need is to register and then we invest this kind of money. After this period, we will get this. After this period, we'll, you know, whatever it is. And inside there, inside there you hear, whoosh. it's like a lightning that passes. Inside there, you hear, you know, it's like there are red lights. Red lights like this. 
inside there. But what happens? Follow this. Because of the sweet talk, we ignore the warnings of the Holy Ghost. We ignore the red lights we are hearing there. And this has occasioned many times in the area of marriage. A brother comes and proposes to you. Or a sister wants to sweet talk you. And there, you are, you are, there are red, red lights. Red. Red. The Holy Spirit is giving you a warning. But because of peer pressure, because of your reasoning, my reasoning, we just go on. I'll say this, by the word of God, Jesus promised to you. He spoke to you. Your girl will live. Your girl will live. Yes, there are some delays. Because of interruptions, good and bad interruptions. I'll say that again. Yes, there is another report that has come. Another report has come. That your girl is dead. Your girl will never live. Jesus comes and says, those are facts, but I am the truth. Those are facts. The fact is, there is delay. The fact is, there have been interruptions. The fact is that you have gone through many attacks in the meantime. You have been scandalized. Oh yes, there have been bad reports coming. The enemy of the soul, of your soul, of my soul, is preaching. That girl will never leave. She's dead. They are in their culture, where death occurred, they had to have professional mourners who came with the flutes, wailings. May I go deeper? No matter how poor a family was, you had to have two people, professional Mourners who are very good in playing flute. And at least one woman who knew how to wail big time. It was that serious. So these are the professional mourners that are now coming to bring a bad report. And we are people who are actually professionals when it comes to be bringing negative reports. Professionals. Professionals. Jesus told Jairus, Jairus, I heard what they said. What they are saying, everything you see, it, facts. But I um, the truth. What is truth? What is truth? 
truth is God's opinion on any and every matter. God's opinion. Truth is God's standard by which reality is measured. You can only measure reality by what God speaks because he is the truth. He is the truth. And I'll show you this in the Bible. I'll show you how important this is from the Bible. Stick. In fact, I, I have come to learn that the first impression I get of something, I'll go and pray. And many times, I'm not saying all times, many times, the first impression was the right one. I will say that again. I'm not saying every time. But what I get there, what I get there, if it is not contaminated by what is here on the head, there, the inner man, the Bible says the spirit of man is his candle. Gives you light. This is where you should go. Avoid this, avoid this. Jesus told Jairus, Jairus, uh, did you see the way I do? I ignored them. Now, ignore fact number one, delay. Ignore fact number two, interruption. Ignore fact number three, the bad report. I am the truth. I'm the truth. Watch this. The Bible says, he did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. This is in verse 37. Verse 38, when they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with the people crying and wailing. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. They laughed at him. I want you to see something here. Please listen. In your journey of faith, don't carry everybody with you. That's amazing. Love them. Jesus left nine of his disciples. He loved them. Know who is going to help you at your level of faith. Who is going to help you? Some people, I mean, it would simply discourage you. Yeah. Some people don't have the kind of faith you have. That's why Jesus took with him these three. And I want you to see how truth contradicts facts. Jesus comes and says, what are, you, what, what are you doing here? The girl is not dead. She is asleep. In the eyes of God, the girl was asleep. In the eyes of everybody else, she was dead. The reason why I'm saying to you by the word of God, Stick to whatever Jesus spoke to you the very first time. 
over that issue you have is this. Please listen to this. Many people will see that your situation, your future is dead. But Jesus says it's just dormant. And like you know, we have three kinds of volcanoes. We have active, we have dormant, we have the extinct. Now, Jesus says this one is just dormant. It will rise up, throw lava all the way up. But in the eyes of people, she is dead. Listen to this. And don't allow people to kill your future. When God still says it's alive. Don't allow. Jesus goes up with his three. And all he is going to do is what you will find here. Oh my God. The Bible says, after he put them out, I love this. He took the girl's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where she, the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Taritha Kumi, which means, little girl, I say unto you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. And this, and at this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give us something to eat. Two things before I go to another scripture. Listen to this. Two things. By the way, have you noted that this girl was born when the woman with the issue of blood started suffering? The woman suffered 12 years. This girl is 12 years. She has suffered 12 years. I mean, and during this period, there is another one, girl growing, and they follow this. On the same day, we are going to have a miracle of healing and a miracle, a miracle of resurrection, same day. Same day. What am I saying? Listen to this. This is vital. This is so important. If you can ignore the voice of man, the power to heal, the power to raise from the dead will be activated on your behalf. The power to restore will be activated in your life. The power to resurrect that dream, to resurrect that promise, to resurrect that vision, will be activated in your life. Jairus ignored the voices of people. The woman ignored the voices of the traditions of men. That said in Leviticus 15, she should not come anywhere near. And the Bible comes and says, listen to this. On, in one day, just that same day, we had two major instant miracles. Two. Healing. Raising from the dead. Two. All those miracles came to people who rose above the contrary, the negative reports, the negative words of men. Instant. Please, go with me now to the Old Testament. Good God. Genesis chapter 17. 
to your neighbor line upon line. Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Walk before me blameless. Listen to this. I will confirm my covenant. That's the word. Between me and you, and it will greatly increase your numbers. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I will confirm the word I gave you at first. Let me say that again. Why did God tell Abraham to walk before him perfect? And that word perfect means mature. He was telling Abraham, Abraham, we have been with you for a long time. Be mature now. It's the high time you matured. I know when you look at NIV, it's blameless. You go to King James, it is perfect. The actual meaning of that word perfect is walk before me in maturity. It's the high time you mature. Abraham. Why did God tell him that? Because if you look at Genesis chapter 12, God is going to even change the name of Abraham. He was Abraham. He calls him Abraham, the father of many nations. He's going to change the name of Sarai to Sarah, mother of many nations. He tells him, I'll bless you. You'll be a blessing and your children, oh my, they'll be like the stars or sand on the seashore. I will give you children. Listen to this. Like you know, Genesis 16, Sarah comes to Abraham. He is going to give him a voice contrary to the voice Abraham had at first. He is going to give him a suggestion. A suggestion and the word you had first are two different things. Please learn to differentiate a suggestion somebody will give you and the word you heard first. I'll say that again. They may be well-meaning, but a suggestion must be weighed on the scale of the very word you had at first. I'm going to say that again. Where you are praying, you are fasting, and God spoke to you. Here, don't allow man's suggestions. I believe in counsel, but every word of counsel must be weighed against the very word I heard first. It's very important. Very, very important. I'm the kind of people, please listen to this, who will take 
a month, two months, three months, uh, until I am sure that everything I'm going to do is going to conform to that word I heard first. Because God is behind his word to confirm it. The word he spoke. He come. You know, Abraham. He had had a nice meal. I can only imagine. Sarah is sitting here. Next to him. He tells Abraham, Abraham. I think. I have a revelation. Be very careful of those people who come to you with I think. They are not sure. I have a revelation. Wait against the word of God. Wait against the confirmation you are hearing inside here. Here, 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 here. I think I have a revelation. Do you see this girl who has served us so well for so many years? This one? If you want, just go with her. She will conceive. And this is what will happen prophetically. Can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? Many people are misled by people who sound extremely spiritual. When the baby is being born, and I'll pray it will be a boy, I release a boy. I prophesy a boy. When the boy will be born, I'll be there as the midwife and I'll declare him mine in the name of the Lord and we are good to go, Abraham. Abraham! What did you hear first? Why you told the children you will have will come through mate, the maid or through your wife, Sarah. Abraham did not listen to that word, to that signal, to the red lights. He didn't. He didn't. Okay, the boy was born. And when that boy is born, he is born. Please listen to this. Something Abraham, I'm sure. No, I, I, I may be wrong. Something that Abraham may not have considered. Hagar was an Egyptian. Hagar was the girl... Abraham was given in Egypt. She's not a Jew. She's not from the lineage of, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. She's not. She's nowhere. She's a Jew. And God will never make himself. God will never make himself. Oh yes, he had, delayed, he had stayed for 10 years. 
But listen to this. Ten years, and God started with him when he was 75 years old. Now, because of that mistake, he is going to be 99. Another 14 years wasted. Another 14 years wasted because he did not hear. He did not stick to the first voice. It costed him another 14 years. When he is 99, God comes and tells him, now you are young enough for me to fulfill my promise. Now you have learned enough. You have learned to stick to my own word, the one I gave you first. You are young enough. Now you can start having children. Ask your neighbor, Atakama Ameshanga Sana. What is this voice you are hearing that is confusing you? Sauti gani unasikia? Akuambia umezeeka. You are very poor. The economy has not changed. Get Ishmael. Ishmael will either abort your promise or delay it significantly. Sio simame tuombe tu ni kuombe. Si nimemaliza. Wacha kuniangalia namna hiyo simama simama ni kuombe. Simama tuombe. Another time simama simama simama.